Uh, I will talk about synthetic metric and stochastic uniformity PD. It should be a little bit simpler than what the summary uh, says, so what I can do. Uh, <coughs> so I will talk about spaces where we are working and about solving uniform Jacobi equations. And uh, I will explain the synthetic point of view and uh, explain the running objects. And then, since this seems to be more a uh, routine the of the conference, uh, talk about synthetic homogenization and also in the stochastic case, and then give some very vague idea of the ingredients of the family. So, the space you can imagine that it's just a Euclidean space will be a potential button with the standard synthetic form and standard UE form. And uh, I will need Lagrangian submanifold, which are just n dimensional submanifold of which the synthetic form vanishes. And I will denote by L of t star n d lambda the set of these exact Lagrangians. Well, L0 is the set of those Hamiltonian isotopic to the zero section, but you can forget about that at this one moment. And the main example is that if you look at the graph of the differential of a function, that's a Lagrangian. So manifold and any Lagrangian that is a graph is of this type. So it's the graph of a differential. And now if you have a Hamiltonian H of T and Q and P, then you have a Hamiltonian flow, and this Hamiltonian flow adds on the set of Lagrangian. If you start from a Lagrangian, then you get another Lagrangian. This is sense, this space itself. And for us, and that's an important point of view, is that Lagrangian will play the role of generalized function. But on the other hand, uh, if I give you, if you're going to engineer the uh, solution of an equation and I say, okay, the solution of the equation is this Lagrangian submanifold, is not going to be very happy because he wants some numbers. So from this Lagrangian, one has to extract numbers, and that's <coughs> one thing that we're going to do. So the Hamilton Jacobi equations, uh, there are, I, I will look at two kinds of this equation. So the evolution uh, equation, which is partial derivative of u with respect to t plus h of t and x of the u of the x of t and x is zero. And uh, the initial condition is given by some function f. Although there's a stationary case which is more complicated than we will not touch too much about this stationary case. Uh, I have a hypersurface and I have an equation h of x t u over the x is zero. And I fix the value of u on this on this microsurface. And there are of course many applications to dynamics and even to I would say explicitly fundamental mathematics, since one of the one of the first applications of Hamilton Jacobi equation was by Jacobi, and it was used to prove the addition theorem for elliptic integrals by Abel. It was a new proof. And uh, if you look on oh, anyway. If you look in uh, Jacobi horizontal nuclear dynamic, uh, there's, a, there's a chapter where he explained that, and it is really beautiful because he starts with some Hamilton Jacobi equation coming from the equation x double dot equals zero. And of course, no one is going to be interested in the equation x dot double dot equals zero, but he takes this, looks at the Hamilton Jacobi equation, and then makes a change of variable, and then everything is in this change of variables into what are called elliptic coordinates. And then the simple properties of the flow of x double dot equals zero becomes the addition formula for the elliptic I, I recommend that if you have a proof that this, you look at it, it's so extremely beautiful and uh, extremely simple and uh, completely out of the standard uh, methods that you would expect to prove the other thing. And of course, it has a uh, large importance in. Uh, Wave equations and in classical analysis, the work of KD methods, and then also in fluid dynamics, in quantum theory, in image processing, and I'm sure you know more applications than I, I can mention. And well, what happens when you solve this equation? Maybe, uh, <coughs> so here I look at the case of du, normal du of x equal 1 and u equal 0 on the hypersurface, so the hypersurface, sorry the one here, and as you evolve, well, you, I'm looking at the level set of u, 
So I wrote you an epsilon and four epsilon, but four epsilon is arbitrary. And what happens is that you going to develop some singularities. Okay, that's that's well known. And if you do that for the evolution equation, uh, you get a picture which is not as nice because I wasn't as careful drawing it, but you could make it just as nice as the previous one, where you also have trajectories that intersect and you have focal paths. So what happens? Well, <coughs> if we deal with the evolution case, which is the one you should remember from now, the geometric solutions for us will be just Lagrangian like submanifold in the cotangent bundle of n times r. So r is the evolution, uh, is, is time. So what you do is that you start from n zero, which is the graph of Vf, which is the initial condition, and you apply this Hamiltonian flow given by the h of the equation, okay? and you get some on the manifold MP, which is Lagrangian, and this is what we call the geometric solution. So as long as MT is a graph, it's going to be the graph of some function, the, the differential of UT, as I said before, any Lagrangian that is a graph is the graph of the differential of something, and uh, as a result, U is going to be a solution of the equation. So, so far, everything goes fine. What happens? Then is that at some point MT ceases to be a graph. And then we have what some people call the shock or a singularity or whatever, and so solutions cannot be smooth beyond this time. So if you have any reasonable definition of a solution beyond this time thing, then it's still not going to be a smooth solution. So then you look for what are called generalized solutions, there are several uh, options. One classical option is by the solution, which is particularly appropriate when the Hamiltonian H is complex in P. If the Hamiltonian H is complex in P, then you're dealing with the minimization problem for the, for the Lagrangian, the corresponding Lagrangian, and then the viscosity solutions are exactly the solution that you need. And in fact, they coincide with the variation solution that I mentioned. So there's a second method which uses what Francesco mentioned about this existence of generating functions, and which are called variational solutions, and have some common properties and some properties which are different from the from the viscosity solution. However, what always survives is the geometric solution. The geometric solution is a Lagrangian which is smooth. And this exists for all time. And this MT also have a meaning. Uh, people tend to think that uh, geometric solution are just some fantasy of maybe pure mathematician, but it's not it's not the case. Uh, in fact, well, let me <coughs> look at this picture here. <coughs> the, I, I will start from the end of the slide. So this uh, picture is an example of a generalized solution, so it's not a graph. And what this represents is a phase transition on, on the uh, So the graph will be given by a function which is the blue and red part. So the red part will correspond to the phase A in, uh, in thermodynamics, for example. Uh, phase B will correspond to a second uh, phase, and then you will have a jump between them, and uh, this will be a phase transition. But the other points of this uh, Lagrangian uh, submanifold correspond to metastable, case, met metastable uh, situation. So they, they actually have a real meaning. It's, it's not just uh, it's not just a fantasy. So let's let's go back to. Uh, the description of the Lagrangian. So the Lagrangian can be described, as I say, by generating function. You, you don't have to really, uh, and I'm not giving the precise definition of the, uh, of the generating function, but just know that it's a variational, uh, it's a variational principle. And uh, what the theorem that uh, Francesco mentioned says is that it doesn't matter which variational principle you choose, the result we get will always be the same. And uh, so for fixed Q, you can compute, you can find critical points of this function ST of X and Q, and this gives you a critical value, and this critical value is exactly the solution. So it usually S corresponds to the energy thermodynamic setting, for example, and the XI you can consider the sort of high hidden variables, right? So you don't, you don't see. And the Q are, for example, intensive parameters, and the P are in, uh, extensive one or or usually, I think the few are parameters that you can control, like usually you control pressure and temperature, 
and the P are the dual ones which are uh, like the volume and the ends of it that we really do not, you cannot control. Okay, but uh, in, in, of course, in different situations, it, uh, it can be different. And the actual energy is continuous, but the differential has discontinuity. So that's in phase variation, you know that the volume can have discontinuities, or the entropy will have discontinuities. So that's, that's exactly what's, what's going to happen. And this is a two dimensional uh, picture where you see you have this, the same kind of phenomenon, and you have, uh, you have a fold, for example, on the projection, and then you have a singularity of cusp time at the end here, and then you have 14 singularities uh, on the line, and uh, the end point will correspond, for example, to a triple point in a phase diagram. And the other thing you see is that you, there are several ways of going uh, from one point to the other. You can, for example, follow uh, a line parallel to, the, to this rectangle here, and then on, on top you will jump, or you could go around and, and come back. And that's uh, what you get from this variation of solution. So what you get is that it satisfies the equation on an open and then set of full measure. So that's of course, it's also continuous and depends continuously on the function h on the Hamiltonian and the initial condition f. And it depends continuously in the C0 topology, which is rather remarkable because the equation depends on the derivative and that's one of the properties of uh, symplectic uh, uh, approach to this problem is that you expect that things depend on the derivatives and so will only be continuous for the C1 topology topology depending on the derivative but actually you can much better in the sense that it's, if you just make a C0 perturbation of H then you get a small perturbation of the solution which is much better and by the way, it's also what happens for viscosity dissolution, but for other reasons. And the new feature of this variation solution with respect to viscosity dissolution, so it can, I mean, as people said of Microsoft, it's not a bug, it's a feature. So for some people, this could be considered as a bug, but it's also considered, I mean, I also consider it's a feature, is that it exhibits some hysteresis phenomena. In the sense that if you take the solution at time, take the initial condition at time zero and see where you get at time t, and then start again from time t and go to time t plus s, this is not the same as traveling from initial condition to time t plus s. And more generally, it depends how you travel from one point to the other, as was the case with the previous in the picture. So this variation of solution have a kind of memory which viscosity solution do not have. Depending on what kind of physical problem you're dealing with, you can say, okay, that's not a bad, that's not a good feature to have, or on the contrary, it could be a good feature. And of course, geometric solutions are symplectic in value, in the sense that if you apply a map which preserves the symplectic form, for example, if you apply a Hamiltonian diffeomorphism, uh, then everything is well so that looks preserved in the sense that the geometric solution are just sent to the new geometric solutions. On the other hand, you have to keep in mind that here you were talking about the graphs and the vertical projection. So of course, when you apply this diffeomorphism, you're going to modify the projection. So even though it's easy to find the new geometric solution by a change of variable, the actual solution, the variation solution you're going to find is going to be completely different. So there's, there's a positive side and there's a, there's a negative side of this. So what are the underlying objects? Well, there's this remarkable metric that I uh, sort of mentioned, which is this metric gamma on the set of Lagrangian, which makes this continuity uh, easy to check in a way. And uh, it's a metric of, that people say of type C minus 1, where the reason is that if you look at the graph of the F, and for example, the distance from the graph of the F to the zero section, then this is given by the oscillation of your function. So it's bounded by the C0 norm, so somehow the differential, the gamma for the differential <coughs> is uh, in terms of the C0 norm, so it's, people sometimes say this is a C minus 1 method, sort of gaining one derivative. And it's compatible with the C0 topology for UL in the sense that the map from L to UL is uh, continuous for gamma and C0. 
And uh, another interesting feature is that Hamiltonians act by isolation. Says that if you look at the distance between two Lagrangians that lie in Hamiltonian, then the distance hasn't changed. That's important feature. And there's also a similar metric on the set of Hamiltonians. So you can measure the distance between two Hamiltonian nodes. So this will be bounded by the C0 distance between the Hamiltonian, not the C1 distance. And uh, it satisfies a similar property in the sense that if you take two Hamiltonian and apply to the same Lagrangian, the distance will be bounded by the distance between the two Hamiltonians. Okay. Now, <coughs> what I would like to uh, explain is how from this you do synthetic homogenization. So, <coughs> I start with the Hamiltonian HQ1P, which is periodic in Q, matching on part N. Have a Hamiltonian H of Q and B, and I don't, and a priori, I don't assume that it's not less to P. It's just a general Hamiltonian. Maybe it's coercive, it's better. And then you look at the solution in UK of the Hamilton Jacobi equation, so the one I wrote at the beginning, and you see that there's this rescaling factor that gives you some rescaling of the map. So maybe <coughs> I should write what the evolution equation is. So that, uh, well, I first think that the theorem, and then I will explain. So the theorem says that if you look at the, so the solution UK of the variational solution of the hamilton jacobi equation for this HK here, then they will converge to a solution of this equation where X is not involved in. So I will not show you a picture where, where this is uh, maybe explained better. But uh, why this is difficult? Well, because if you write the, Hamilton, the Hamiltonian equation, you get two dots is minus the h over dp. So this is somehow a nice equation. But the p dot equation is k times d d over dq. Okay, so you have a k factor which goes to infinity, and so you have a singular perturbation uh, problem. And that's the interesting fact: is that for Hamiltonian homogenization and singular perturbation are essentially the same. And they're also the same as understanding the long time behavior of the, of the flow. And why is that? Well, because if you look at the flow of h of k times q1p, this is up to rescaling. So rescaling by k, up to time by k, is the flow at time k times t. So if you look at flow at time 1, what you get for the flow of h of k times q1p is just the flow at time k. So what you're looking is as k goes to infinity, you're looking at what happens for longer and longer time. Uh, it's well known that usually you cannot say much about what happens for a, for a flow in uh, extremely long time. Um, the interesting aspect, I think, is that these three problems, which are usually considered as separate, the single perturbation problem, the long time problem, and homogenization, are actually just one, one aspect of the, of the same. Of the same. So, <coughs> This is an example, that assume you have, uh, so this is a metric example, so it's a classical example, so assume on the first picture I have two kinds of, uh, for example, the blue would be the C and the yellow would be the island that you want to go from one place to the other, and it's faster to walk than to swim. So when you want to go from one place to the other, well, you sort of try to go to the nearest coast and then follow the coast and then <coughs> swim again. And of course, it's an optimization problem, so it's not just going to the nearest post, you have to optimize what your path. And that's for the first one, and then you escape, you get the second one, and you do the same. And you see that you're going to sort of probably uh, <coughs> touch the first uh, corner of the app of the, of the star on one side, and then go to the other one, and then do the same with the third one, and then you repeat this. And uh, you see that the trajectories that we will follow are more and more complicated. But somehow, the distance, the time it will take to go from one point to the other has good chances of converging. And in fact, this is something that was, in this case, was known quite a while ago. Uh, first by Yachel, but that's so it came before, I think. And then uh, this was also uh, by Gromov and first uh, uh, under different things. And, uh, <coughs> so this was quite well known. But this is for a Hamiltonian, which is essentially a metric Hamiltonian, okay, which corresponds to a distance. 
And I explained before it's in a much more uh, general framework, particularly in the, in the non complex case. So, uh, let me mention another case here, which is the stochastic case. Well, in that case, we think the Hamiltonian H of T and X and B, which also depends on some parameter omega. And omega belongs to some set capital omega. And if we have an action, in this case of R M, such that H of X plus A, B and omega is H of X and P, and the translation over omega. And the action of R N on omega is ergonomic, so if you go back to this picture here, it's like saying, well, now I'm going to sort of throw these stars in a random way on the plane and see what, what happens then. And, uh, that's slightly more complicated case, of course. And another example, uh, which is essentially the same as the, as the one I just mentioned, is that uh, you just take a P square and then you add a sum of potentials which are shifted and shifted in a, in a way that is random. And you have to be a little bit careful because the one thing to remain bound and it's uh, not, completely, uh, not completely obvious, but uh, it gives you some, uh, some Hamiltonian. And again, we can do syntactic homogenization. The sense that the solution will converge for almost all omega, so this is a probabilistic uh, uh, statement, to a variation and solution of the equation here of the same type, which does not involve x. <laughs> and <clears throat> well, what's the the strategy of the proof? Well, so uh, I, I, I I make it shorter than than it is. The first thing is that we have a map, so the Hamiltonian depending on omega gives you a map from this set omega to the set of Hamiltonian, okay. and. <clears throat> By translation, you get isometry of the set of Hamiltonians for this metric gamma. So the metric gamma will play a crucial role in here. And I look at the image uh, of omega and I call it H omega. And now we have this set H omega, which has this. So this is a set of Hamiltonians. And this has uh, a metric such that the closure of this metric is compact for gamma. So this would not be true if you don't use the metric gamma. And uh, so this closure now is compact for the gamma topology. And now you have this action of Rn on omega, which becomes an action of, of Rn on the set of isometry. So it's an action of uh, Rn on H omega, but then it acts also on the closure of H omega because it acts by isometry, so you can go to the completion. And this is a comp this is compact. So you have an action of Rn on a space which is compact, so by isometries, and the closure of this uh, action will be will give you this is an old theorem by uh, on the right actually uh, will give you a compact abelian metric group, and the compact abelian metric group is essentially a subgroup of the infinite torus. It's important that it's a metric group, otherwise you have some pathological example. And now you have something which is essentially almost periodic. And now if you have something which is almost periodic, you can approximate. And this also requires some work and require again using this gamma metric for the approximation. Uh, you get an action by a uh, finite dimensional torus. And the idea is that for d large enough, you're going to get an action by a d-dimensional torus for d larger and larger, but you can work with a fixed d and see what happens. And for fixed d, you reduce to the quasi-periodic case. So think of an irrational line on a torus, what happens. And uh, once you have this action on uh, of a finite dimensional torus, then you can essentially reduce to the case of uh, a continuous function on, on a torus, and this is the periodic case. In fact, the proof is, is not exactly like this, but once you reduce to the quasi periodic case, the proof is essentially the same as it was in the periodic case. And I don't, in fact, I don't use myself in this case, but I use essentially the same. And, uh, well, <coughs> I think one in, in 
interesting aspect maybe of all of this is that it has a connection between this Hamilton Jacobi you know, stochastic equation and some fundamental question in synthetic topology. So these Hamilton Jacobi equations are of course strongly connected with the synthetic topology and the gamma metric. And an important thing is to understand what are the compact sets for gamma. And in fact, this homogenization problem for Hamilton Jacobi equation, whether it's, I mean, it's easier to state it for the non stochastic case, just tells you that the sequence rho k minus 1, phi k, rho k, remember that rho k is just the rescaling of the multiplication by k of the q variables, this is gives you a convergent sequence. And of course, this cannot be a convergent sequence for any reasonable topology, it cannot be convergent. Can't converge for the C0 topology, the trajectory will not converge. It, it's only a convergent sequence for this gamma topology. But stating this is essentially equivalent to saying that you can do homogenization for Hamilton Jacobi equation, for variation resolution of Hamilton Jacobi equation. So you have on one hand something that sounds like an abstract and uh, fundamental result, and on the other hand, a statement that is much more complicated. And this compactness has actually further application. I will not mention them on Aubrey Madden theory. Uh, that's more dynamic consistence. And uh, that's the, everything I have to say. So this S curve is the curve of all points such that the derivative of S with respect to psi, psi you think of them as sort of hidden parameter F, and the derivative of psi is zero, so these are trivial points, so they correspond to actual states, but sometimes you don't see them or you tend not to see them just because there is a more stable situation. So for example, if you're, if you're here, Actually, you're going to fall down here. That's the that standard thing. Then to actually see them with a function, you have you would have to add something. Okay. But uh, in in practice, you can actually see, uh, in physics you actually see some metastatic case, and uh, it's the same on the next. Uh, sorry, that's fine. It's the same on, on the next picture. So you have <coughs> the the phase transition, which is this sort of dotted line here, where you're going to jump from one, one state to the other, one phase to the other. But uh, whatever is about here, and whatever is about sorry, here, you can, you can actually see it, but it's an unstable situation. So this, I don't say that the equation I wrote gives you a model for that, for how the uh, meta statement will actually appear or not. But uh, somehow it's encoded in the geometric solution. And then you have to add something, maybe some, uh, maybe actually using some stochastic terms to make this clear. Uh, 